Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and a very warm welcome to the latest in our series of Doha debates sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. The election victory of the Palestinian group Hamas has sent shockwaves around the world and divided the international community. Should they isolate Hamas and push it into the arms of Syria and Iran, or engage with a group that espouses violence and is dedicated to the destruction of Israel? Tonight, we examine those choices, as well as the dangers and dilemmas contained in them. Our motion, this House believes the international community must accept Hamas as a political partner. Well, speaking for the motion, Stanley Cohen, an American lawyer and an outspoken supporter of Palestinian rights. He's represented many Arab and Muslim activists in the US, including the head of Hamas's political wing, Musa Abu Marzouk, whose extradition was sought by Israel in the 90s. With him is Dr. Mahmoud Mohamedou. He's Associate Director of the Harvard Program on Humanitarian Policy and Conflict Research. He's currently completing a book on Al-Qaeda. And against the motion, Salim Mansour, born in India. He's Associate Professor of Political Science at the University of Western Ontario in Canada and is a frequent contributor to newspapers and journals in America. And David Frum, former Special Assistant and Speechwriter to President George W. Bush and now Resident Fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. He's credited with inventing the phrase axis of evil, or at least two out of the three words, which have gone into the history books and brought its author plenty of notoriety. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. And now let me call on Stanley Cohen, first of all, to speak for the motion, please. Thank you. Hamas won for a very simple reason. Hamas is the Palestinian people. It is an expression of their desire to be free of the occupation. It is their pride and their ability to be resilient for 60 years. Hamas won because it touched a chord in all Palestinians. Now, what is the West to do today? We know what the West has done since 1948 to Palestinians. Six million living in a diaspora, tens of thousands slaughtered, hundreds of thousands injured, homes destroyed, millions jailed and tortured, a wall built, the balkanization of Palestine. Thank you, I think the international community has done quite enough. I think it is now up to the Palestinians and Israelis on the ground to take the lead to resolve this particular issue. And what of the role of the United States in particular? Well, we know the United States has provided $178 billion for the machinery of death in Palestine. So I find it interesting when the president or people in the West talk about Hamas laying down its weapons as a precursor or a precondition. Maybe Israel needs to lay down its weapons for a change. Now, the demands of Israel are very interesting. There are three demands that Israel suggests must be met before they will sit down and meet with the chosen representatives of the Palestinian people. One, they demand that Hamas acknowledge the existence of Israel. Interesting. Okay, they acknowledge the existence of Israel. For decades, they negotiated with the PLO, which had a charter that called for the destruction of Israel. They still negotiated. They, ne they negotiated out of reality. Last week, Musa Abu Marzouk himself announced that Israel exists. Now let's move along to the issues. Finally, we have the issue of acknowledgement, acknowledging prior conditions. I know of no government in the world that takes power and automatically accepts blindly all previous, acknowledge, uh, all previous acknowledgments or agreements that have been entered into without looking to see if they make sense, if they are wise. The world has two choices. The world can either continue going where we've been for decades, we can continue to destabilize. I must ask you to come to a conclusion. I shall. Or we can do as the Jewish philosopher Spinoza said many years ago, there is no hope without fear. And the real fear at this point is that we will miss this opportunity and seek to punish Palestinians for this golden chance <clears throat> to grab peace finally at the end of the tunnel. Thank you.
Stanley Cohen, thank you very much. You omitted to say that the, amongst their ranks they had suicide bombers who blew up women and children on buses. How come you left that out? Didn't leave it out. There's no difference between suicide bombers blowing up buses or Israeli jets killing 50 children in a densely populated building. Death is death. We like to romanticize the Israeli army. So oh, no, it's okay. no, no atrocity is too bad. But you can't sit down with the perpetrators all, who all carry it out. The IRA carried out bombings in London where thousands of people over the years in that struggle were So why don't you condemn Hamas as well as Israel then? I have taken the position that I'm a realist. Hamas has been elected. They have been chosen. I can condemn anyone I want. It will not bring one moment of peace on the ground. 